welcome to Natalingo's Natta. You are listening to episode 16. Normally at this stage, I do what has been happening in the classroom. However, it's the end of the summer holiday as I'm recording this. So, what has happened in the holidays? To do with school, of course. In England, then in France, over the summer, I take part in this French initiative called Partir en Livre. And basically, I volunteer to read stories to children, which might not come as a surprise to you. So I did this on this campsite in France and there was this very keen five-year-old who loved to come for stories but also sing nursery rhymes with me and it was just very responsive to anything like that. And one day he taught me one. It's called Les mains en l'air. I will put a link to this rhyme with this recording and Basically, I was so excited about it because it's so nice for just settling children down. It's got actions to go with it. It's good for body parts. And I thought, oh, this will just be perfect for the classroom. Merci, Gustave. So when I got home, I posted it in the Languages in Primary School Facebook group, which I haven't mentioned before, to tell everyone about it. And basically, it seemed like I was one of the last ones to know it. Many, many people came on and said, oh yeah, I use this all the time with the little ones and they love it. And some said they use them with older ones. There were a few people that said, thanks, Natalie, that's great, who didn't know it. But I felt I was the last one to the party. But never mind, better late than never. I've got a new little rhyme to teach the children. I think I'll do it gradually. And that was thanks to this little boy on holiday. So I'll say it again. Merci, Gustave. And if you don't know that rhyme, I think you'll love it. Today I would like to talk about those things that I always have in my school bag, those essentials. And I would love to know at the end of this what you always carry around with you and the reasons why you do it because there's got to be something I'm missing out on so please do share. Of course I always have a story in there, a story that might not fit in with any particular scheme but that would be appropriate to tell anybody at any point and I suppose a lot of the things that I have in my bag are some just-in-case just in case something great happens, just in case your lesson gets a bit messed up, just in case the computer doesn't work. We have to adapt as teachers, don't we, and things happen at the last minute. Just in case I just feel like it. The children might not be responsive to a certain thing on a certain day. I also carry around my mascots, which I have mentioned before. Mini Miss Paris and Pablo. They're there in the bag because I want to make sure that I've got them when something comes up about the culture, something that they might have done in France and I want to show the pictures to the children. And the children ask for them, they love holding them, they love knowing that they're there anyway, so we use them for a variety of things in the classroom. So Mini Miss Paris and Pablo, the mascots, are in the bag. I have another puppet, which is the one that I like to throw about. You know, when you do speaking activities and you just want to give it to a child so that they know you're expecting them to speak. Or it might just be that someone just needs to give a puppet a cuddle. I also have a timer. I know you can have timer on the whiteboards and they are effective and they make a lot of noise or you can have songs that count down but I still like the good old-fashioned timer. So if I tell the children that they've got two minutes to do a certain activity then I'll put the timer on. Now okay I do cheat sometimes if I can see that they're not finished but there are times when it's really important that they do something within a set time that it's part of what you want them to do. I'm also thinking when I give them some sorting activities, maybe like 12 of them, they have to put the months in French back in order with the flashcards, something like this. 
the teams to compete is a bit like a time trial. So I need the time uh, for all those types of activities. I just like it in my hand. Sometimes you can give it to another child and it's their responsibility to look after the time. Uh, I do, you probably know by now, like physical things rather than just relying on everything on the computer all the time. Then what happens when the computer doesn't work or you have got no access to the internet? So one of the other things which I have in my bag is a CD. It used to be a tape, let's be honest now. But my dad kindly put the songs which were on that tape onto a CD just so it would last a bit longer. And because I was having to carry a tape and CD record with me all the time, it wasn't very practical. It's just a CD that I know off by heart. I know the songs on there play it or we'll just play a song again just enjoy with the children we might have a few minutes at the end of a lesson we'll go back to this song that I know they love and just have a good time with it at the beginning of lesson any time in the lesson but I've always got this cd and the day you don't have any internet I don't have access to youtube well you still have the cd and there might even be a cd play lying around school you just never know I also always have a set of flashcards, possibly numbers or things related to what I will have learnt with the children recently and leave them there for a little bit. So we can reinforce some phrases, sentences, points that we've been practising. And I have fly swatters. Those fly swatters that are so cheap that you can use. Stick the flashcards on the board with a bit of blue tag and then you have children competing with each other. And those children who might sometimes not want to go at anything just because you give them a fly swatter to hold well they will have a go and want to really swat that card and find it so so that's something I always have in my bag as well I always have some laminated numbers in French or Spanish and that's another just in case there's always so much you can do with numbers and if the children have the numbers in front of them you can start learning them revising them do all sorts of activities but they've got it's a bit like a mat if you want like a reference sheet and that is there in case they don't know the numbers and then well I'm sure you've got loads of ideas of what you can do with the numbers you can make up a lesson on the spot so I have those as a reference as well Last but not least, what I always, always have, and in my handbag as well, not just the school bag, is a set of stickers and certificates. They could be the language detective certificates I've mentioned in the past. They're just little notes, certificates that I can write a little note to say how well they've done in something specific. All sorts of stickers, birthday stickers, well done stickers. All those little things I have in a pouch that just reinforce all the positive things that the children do and tells the people at home as well and it creates that link so the children go away with a sticker hopefully an adult at home will say oh, what have you done to, to get this sticker or the certificate that was something that I said I would work on last year and I have a lot more stickers a lot more certificates much more positivity a lot of it oral feedback but also creating that link between home and school that would be the one thing I would take if I could take nothing else. Not even the story. So now you know my secrets. You know what is in that bag of mine that I will post a photo of with this podcast. So please, please, please get in touch and let me know those essential things that you carry around with you all the time. I'm guessing they might be a little bit more high tech than mine. Oh, I forgot one, I forgot one. It's um, a microphone. It is a USB microphone. It just looks like a proper old fashioned microphone. And I love it for using with the children for recording little speaking conversations that they have. And uh, when they do a the whole class singing, so they can straight away listen to themselves again. Because as a visitor in the schools, I can't take tablet or take photos 
whereas recording the children is nice and easy and uh, it is a lot of fun. So I look forward to you telling me those things that I should have in my bag and I'm sure I'll run off and buy them. (laughs) Thanks in advance. It is now time for the section that you can listen to with your pupils in class and I will teach them something about the French language. Bonjour, c'est Nathalie Paris. Today, children, I would like to talk to you about two different very French sounds and I've got a story to tell you to show you how important it is to keep practicing them and keep trying to do them properly. Don't have to sound very French but just make sure that you don't find yourselves in the situation my future father-in-law found himself in as I will tell you shortly. Those two sounds are the sounds which is spelled O-U. Ooh. It's a bit like a double O ooh, in English, but it's much shorter. Ooh. And the other sound is a bit harder. It's how we sound a U by itself in French, and that's U. You will need a lot more practice for this one. I think you can all manage a U. Give me a U. Yeah, you're really good at that. I requires a bit more practice e, because it doesn't exist in English at all. Even if you can't quite get them right, just make sure that you don't say ooh all the time or e all the time. That's the key thing. You've got to make them sound different from each other. Try and get close. And here is why. You might have heard the phrase j'ai mal. If you want to say you've got a sore part of your body, your sore somewhere in French, you say j'ai mal, j'ai mal à la tête. I've got a sore head. J'ai mal au ventre. I've got a sore belly. J'ai mal à l'oreille. I've got a sore ear. J'ai mal aux dents. I've got Saw teeth, got toothache. Any phrase that starts with Jimal, I hope you never have to use because they're not a good sign. Jimal. To go back to our two sounds and start with the sound ooh. Can you think of a word in French where you've heard that sound ooh? You may want to write a little list down or share them as a group. But I know for a fact you know at least one. And it's bonjour. And that's why the jour, which means day in bonjour, is spelled O-U. That's a O sound, bonjour. But here is the story. It was the morning of my wedding. And my future parents-in-law had been staying with my parents at their house. And my future father-in-law got up. And he likes to have a go at speaking French, which is excellent, of course. But what he said to my parents that morning was, J'ai mal au cul. And my mum and dad gave him a really funny look. So he repeated, J'ai mal au cul. But this time, He was rubbing his neck and what he was trying to say was that he had a sore neck. However, neck in French is cou, C-O-U. What he should have said was j'ai mal au cou. I have a sore neck but in his attempt to sound really French he said j'ai mal au cul. And Q is a bit of a root word to say bottom in French. So he told them that he had a sore bottom and he was being a bit rude saying it using the word Q, which is why my parents give him that funny look. That's why it's important 
you really know the difference between U and E. Again, you don't have to get them perfect, but practice listening out for the difference between those two sounds and keep practicing making those sounds in sentences in words and you'll get better and better and not look a little bit silly like my father-in-law did. You will actually recognize the word Q, which is spelled C-U-L, but the L is silent. Because in English, you talk about cool de sac. You might even live in one. Because it's another word for a dead end, a street. And when you get to the end of it, you can't go anywhere else. Q de sac in French, cool de sac in English, literally means the bottom of the bag. And if you picture it, what the bottom of the bag looks like and what a cul-de-sac looks like, it's very similar. You've got to have the image in your head. But please do avoid using the word qui because, yeah, it's not a very nice word. Be aware of it, <laughs> but don't go around saying it, please, children. I hope my story will help you remember the difference between those sounds, ou, and U, keep practicing. Remember the phrase j'ai mal as well, if you're sore anywhere. And whew, so much learning in just one little session. Thanks for listening. Au revoir. It is now the end of episode 16 of Natalingo's Natter. Thanks, as always, for listening and I look forward to your comments about the content of this podcast, especially finding out what is in your school bags. And I look forward to recording my next episode. But please do get in touch. I love comments. If you feel you can subscribe to it as well, great. But if not, just send me a little message and tell me as well if there's anything that you found useless you don't agree with. That's fine as well. But anything helpful, any tips that you have, then it would be fab for us all to share them. So I hope to hear from you. Au revoir.